Hey, what's happening guys? Mike Moo here. This is an unboxing and some commentary on the Oculus 2. This one, of course, came out in late 2020. At least that's when I got it. And they're now starting to be a little bit more in stock. This is the 256 gigabyte version, which is the highest level version that is available uh, right now as of January 2021 going on to February. A lot of frequently asked questions have to do with should I get the 64 gigabyte model or should I get the 256 gigabyte model? Well, I think that if you are on a budget, go for the 64 gigabyte model. Why? Because the games that are available on here were designed to run on a mobile processor and have been really optimized to not take up too much space. Now, here's where the 256 gigabyte model makes sense. If you have a big family with a wide variety of types of games, then it makes sense to get the bigger one because you're going to have all these games that could potentially be installed all at the same time. And with the upcoming update where they allow families to go and switch different profiles, it just makes it a lot easier to have all the games already on the Oculus themselves. Now inside here, you can see there's some safety information, a reference guide. Uh, I have the version one of the Oculus, so I didn't really go into detail on the safety and the settings on here, but it's a good idea to check it out. Generally, if you played one of these gaming systems where you have hand controllers like uh, Nintendo, before you just want to be kind of careful on how you handle these, make sure you got the protective wrist strap to keep it attached to your hand when you're playing certain games on here, particularly the ones that require quite a lot of movement around. One of the frequently asked questions is, well, should I get the Oculus Go, Oculus Quest 1, or the Quest 2? Obviously, the Quest 2 is the newest version on here. It has the latest hardware and specs. It also comes in at a much lower price. But as you will see here, as I you know, unbox the rest of the main Oculus thing, you'll notice that there are some differences between this and the Oculus 1 if you've, if you've ever owned one of those or played one of those. Now, what they did was they cut the price, so the entry level is only $299. And they upped the resolution a little bit, but quite honestly, between using the Oculus 1 and, and this Oculus 2, I didn't notice a significant increase in resolution. There is some there, but by default, it's pretty close. Where you will see a difference is this strap here. This strap is not comfortable at all for me. And... As such, they sell a better strap completely separately, which I will get to in terms of insulation. Uh, setting up the distance, interpupillary distance is also really simple. As you can see, you just pull it out or push it in together. Bottom is the standard volume control. Then we got the power button over here on the right hand side. Now, as I remove this protective strap uh, and information and stuff on here, there's some information on that little sticker that just lets you know about adjusting the interpupillary distance in there. Those are protective covers on there. There's a little light by that power button. And down below, there are, of course, the volume buttons. Now, you see those little holes around those? Those are all cameras that can identify where you are in your space. And that there is a little eyeglass spacer, which is recommended if you are wearing glasses like myself. Now, I have found that the Oculus Quest 1, right out of the box, is a bit more comfortable than this one here for someone who has a wide face and also has uh, wears fairly big eyeglasses. You get a standard USB-C cable on here, along with what I believe to be an 18-watt USB-C charger. I've used everything from lower end USB-C all the way up to higher end. And the charging speed doesn't really increase much past the 18 watts on here. Although um, it could ju just be my imagination. I haven't done extensive tests with the Oculus Quest 2 as far as charging is concerned. I do know that uh, if you've had a really long session in one of those uh, games where, um, you know, like Beat Saber, that you will probably want to charge in between. Um, at most, I have put on these headsets maybe about an hour to two hours, actually maybe two hours at most, and the battery life was definitely enough for me. I have seen some people who bootstrap and stick on a battery pack onto the strap back there. 
Um, I can't imagine it being very comfortable with these, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you what the Elite Strap looks like and how you install those. This is the Quest 2 Elite Strap. I'll show you what's inside. I think this is a worthwhile upgrade. Now I know there are some third party straps out there. Unfortunately, I haven't tried those out. So um, if you do get this and you have the option of getting Elite Strap, go ahead and get it. There is an Elite Strap with a battery that is attached to it, makes it a little bit heavier, but the battery is integrated on here. Um, but if at the very least, if you plan on playing a lot of games where you move around a lot, move your head around a lot, um, you'll want to upgrade the dinky strap that's on here. So because of course this is the original and the quality is pretty good. And I think this is about $60. I'll have a link down below uh, about this. And um, these were out of stock for a really long time. And they still continue to be a bit out of stock even now. But there are a lot of third parties, and again, I haven't tried those out before. The installation of this is not as straightforward as you would think because of the way the mechanism attaches to what's available on the Oculus 2 out of the box already. So, as you can see, the first instructions, of course, are to remove... Well, here, here's a close look at it. See those two things on the end? they attach directly to the rest of the Oculus 2 uh, headset unit. And you want to peel those back carefully. Now, I've do only done about two of these. And in this round, I was only doing it for the second time. So, would you please excuse if it, looks like, uh, if it looks like I'm not being super careful with it. Because it does take a little bit of effort to remove. And if you're not comfortable with this, maybe get someone else who has a little bit more tens tensile strength to attach. This is definitely not something you want your um, your young teenager to go ahead and try to install. Okay. So the first step is removing the original strap, which is pretty easy because it is just basically a band. Now you probably have absolutely no use for that strap later, but I'd probably still put it away in a box. It's actually just held on through Velcro. And um, the, the key part here is removing this first face pad, which just kind of snaps right out. Now you'll notice I don't have the eyeglass strap, uh, eyeglass spacer in there right now. And that's that's because I knew that I was going to replace this strap anyway. All right, so here, here's, you see that where I just push it out with my thumb right there? That's how you get it off. Um, sticking it back on is the little bit more challenging part because that has a perfect fit to the headset. The Elite, the elite strap does anyway. All right. Um, so this is just held on via Velcro. And the, this top part installs the same way, except from the Elite Strap, okay, from the top. So that's how you can tell which side it's up, because the, the, the part on top is held together with that elastic strap with a Velcro. So here, um, I just kind of figure out which side is the top part of it. And then you're just going to snap it in place. Now, if you look very carefully at the edges of those, um, there are actually designations for the left and the right. So both. Just want to mash them up. And this top part, see that strap part? That faces the top side. Of it. Well, basically, if you do this wrong, don't worry about it. You can just take it off again and stick it on correctly. But there are left and right indicators uh, on here. So I'm going to slide this right through this top panel over there and see that left side, slip it in one side first and then just go ahead and push that right on like that and then make sure it snaps in place and do that on the other side, one side in first, basically the furthest side in and then just kind of push it in. This one I had a little bit more difficulty in, and if you do, just it's probably easier to just take it off and do it again or look at it from a different angle and push it in. And then the final step, of course, is then to put that Velcro strap right up top. Now, these are all adjustable, something you'll need to adjust per person, but I find with the Elite Strap, it's a lot easier to adjust for the different people. And unfortunately, and it could be just my imagination, on the Quest 2, your eyes, at least with my glasses on, you really have to be in, in, in a precise spot in order to get the optimum resolution and clarity. 
And I think the uh, the Quest 1 is a little bit more forgiving. But I think there are some uh, negatives about the Quest 1 with relation to the clarity on, on the sides, maybe. And that's what this one addresses a little bit more. Hence a potential higher resolution. All right. And then you snap back on the face mask part or the face shield part, whatever you call that. And, you know, that sticks right on. But there's something else and another accessory that you should get. If you have an extra wide face or you have an extra narrow face, that's what's coming up uh, in this next part of the video. So there's the eyeglass spacer. As you can see, this is the area that you stick in the closest to the headset itself. So it, this just lets you know that these are for glasses. So you just go ahead and stick that right there um, against the headset first and then put on the, uh, the face shield part. Now, there are some worthy, probably some worthy upgrades. You know, make this a little bit more comfortable for different face styles. Um, these are, of course, the OEM ones and what, what Facebook and Oculus thinks will work for general most faces. But there are definitely some other velvet ones that uh, I'm going to consider trying and installing on my Oculus 2 over the next two months or so. I'm going to try out some of these new ones. But for now, th this seems to work pretty well. Um, there is something okay well there is an additional accessory which is the uh what's going to be coming up in the video next that helps to block out some more light down below in case you have a, a different nose style i have a relatively flat face flat and wide face so this kit is uh definitely something that is recommended and makes my experience look a little bit better and this is the fit kit i think this retails $35 or $40 after taxes here in California. It's a Quest 2 Fit Pack. And it comes with two different spacers. So the one that comes with the Oculus Quest 2 is a medium, right? And this comes with a wide, narrow, and also light blockers, right? It's for people who have wider faces. It kind of blocks the light to make sure that you have a more immersive feel in it. So in here, of course, there are the two spacers. There's a more narrower one and there's a wider one. The differences are not significant, okay? But they're there. They're definitely there. So the one that, of course, I'm going to be using is the wide, wide one. And then there's a narrow one. And it's actually labeled somewhere around here. There we go. N for narrow and W for wide. And the one that comes with the Oculus 2 doesn't say anything on there. So that's how you can tell. Now, what might make sense is uh, if you have someone, you have a buddy has a narrower face, you have a wider face, you can split the cost of it. He gets a narrow one, you get the wide one, vice versa. The only thing that would be missing is the actual um, light blockers, which I will actually show install a little bit later uh, through the lenses. So it's just a matter of removing the that face portion in there and just replacing it. You can just snap that right in. And it'll also fit just fine with eyeglass spacers as well. It just fits in just like that. That's the beauty of, of something uh, when you're getting the whole OEM product. The, the thing from the fit and finish of the Facebook, there's no modifications required. Now, some of these other third-party solutions do require some additional modifications, but generally they sell as a kit or it does it all. But the fit and finish is a little bit difficult to tell. All right, so if I get when, if or when I get my hands on some really good ones, I'll probably compare them with the, some of the really cheap ones, but generally you do get kind of get what you pay for. All right, so I'm just going to stick these back in for potential use again, um, maybe in the future. Or maybe I should just sell them off for cheap, maybe half price for the, the narrow one. Okay, so here are the light blockers. These are, um, these are definitely an upgrade compared to not having them on there. Now, if you get a different face mask shield thing pad that actually has these integrated, then I guess that makes it a little bit easier. But these just stick out a little bit and they just slide right on. They're made of a uh, little rubbery silicone and they just fit right on top of the uh, of, of the view the viewers. I'll just call that the viewers or, or the eye open where your eyes go ahead and stick. And they seem to stay on pretty well. At first, I thought they'd drop off, but no, they've they've pretty much stayed. 
definitely a nice little upgrade. I don't know if I'd spend more than a couple of dollars for these separately, but I, as far as I know, I don't think they are sold separately. They come with a fit kit. And primarily if you, you have a, a flatter face, um, I think that it's most beneficial. Now, I've forgotten to install these on my first one, and I still really very much enjoy the Oculus and the VR. So if you don't have them, I, I wouldn't worry too much about it. But it's definitely nice to have them in here. All right, that pretty much sums up the Oculus 2, the unboxing, the hardware setup portion, and, uh, you know, the, the two other optional upgrades that you might want to consider getting. Uh, the only difference, of course, is that there's an elite strap with a built-in battery pack that does add a little bit of weight to the back, but it helps to balance some things out. And this is the kit that I got, and this is the one I'm going to be using, and so far, the experience has been pretty good. All right, that's it for this video. Please give it a like, subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.